came from India and in these, some of these countries there are people of Indian descent who have some <coughs> concept or some idea of Bhagavad Gita. However, I would like to emphasize that when Srila Prabhupada came and gave his teachings, it just opened up a new dimension to knowledge and spirituality and this is evident by the hundreds and thousands of people all over the world taking up the, Krishna, the practice of Krishna consciousness. So let me just speak a little bit about how it changes people with their different concepts. I'll just give you myself as an example. Although I was brought up in a sadhu family, my father was a you know, saintly person. Mm. But when I went to school, I went to Christian school and we were brought up, you know, educated in knowledge of the Bible and Christ and so on. So I found this, you know, quite interesting as I was growing up, knowing that Jesus Christ is the truth, the way and the life, no one cometh unto the Father but by Him. But questions would come up. Naturally, you will want to know about going back to God and the Father and so on. But when I got a Bhagavad Gita, Srila Prabhupada, and I read this book, one of the greatest and most amazing revelation was here as knowledge of God. And I was wondering, well, is the world asleep? Here is God declaring himself. They're saying, people all over the world, they're speaking about the Son of God coming. But Krishna is saying in the Gita, Ajopi son of Yayatma, although I am Aja, unborn, and my transcendental body never deteriorate, although I am the Lord of all beings, I appear in this world millennium after millennium. Now Hindus, they're familiar with that. They all sing Yada, Yada, Yadharma, Sip. Uh, they, they'll sing like that. But there's a little problem in that in the Hindu society they have many gods and Krishna fits in as one of them. So this one is God, that one is God and I am God too. So the idea is this. When Srila Prabhupada came and he presented the message of the Bhagavad Gita it was quite explicit. Here is God describing himself, his qualifications, the creation, and this is what had an amazing effect. So in the area that I am preaching, Muslims become devotees, Christians become devotees, Hindus become devotees. Why? Just because Bhagavad Gita is giving the most detailed information that we need to know about who we are, who is God, and what's our relationship with God. Most detailed knowledge. What is your experience? 
my experience is uh, similar because I'm born in a Roman Catholic family, and uh, also after I love Bible and uh, teaching that uh, God is waiting in the kingdom of us. But then after reading Bhagavad Gita, I got uh, much more detailed understanding that I'm a spirit soul, the body is covering me, I'm like in a prison house, and I have to purify my relationship with God, and then I can be back with God, who's Krishna. And I say yes. Krishna is fitting perfectly the position of God. And he, lo he loves me. And he's waiting back to be with him. So that's hunting. Bhaktivedanta Swami's word was so purely touching my heart. And I could not forget. And then uh, it was completely uh, satisfying. All the questions came in my mind. I have a master degree in psychology. So naturally I was only reading books of psychology, philosophy, but I was never satisfied with all the answers. And, and but after reading Bhaktivedanta Swami Bhagavad Gita, one by one all my questions were answered in my relation with the Lord and how to purify my heart and who is God and how, and how wonderful it is. And uh, it completely transformed my life. One comment I would like to make is that I find it quite interesting that even though in India there is standard spiritual knowledge, scriptures like Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam is not just some ordinary religious information. However, I am most astonished that even in the land of Dharma, in India, that people could act in ignorance just like in the West as though it doesn't exist. For example, I met some religious people in Tirupati, right? So I saw their strange dress and so on. So I was asking them, uh, who do you worship? Who is your worshipable deity and so on? So they described someone, but I wasn't familiar with that person. So I was thinking, strange, you're worshipping a god that I haven't heard of? But then they say, oh, this is a son of Lord Shiva. So then I said, son of Lord Shiva, oh, so, so why don't you worship the father? But then I said, but why do you worship him anyway? But it is ambiguous as to why it is sentiment. You know, you, you have some feeling. However, Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam doesn't induce us to worship God just because it, it, it's some feeling. The Vedic scriptures define God as Janmadi Asetaha, Him from whom everything comes. That's one definition, him from whom everything comes. Next definition is Bhagavan, the possessor of all opulences. Sad Aishwarya Purna, complete. He has all beauty, all knowledge, all strength, all wealth, all renounce. He has everything to the unlimited degree. Therefore, in Bhagavad Gita, when Krishna says, Aham, Sarvasya Prabhavo, I am the source of everything. And he means everything. Everything material, he enumerates all the elements. Earth, water, fire, air. He said, I am the source of everything material and spiritual. And Buddha Bhava Samanvita, the wise, who knows this perfectly, engages in my devotional service and they worship me with all their heart. Krishna says, anyone who knows that I am the source of everything, that person is wise. And those who don't know that they're not wise, they're otherwise. Not Buddha. Mudha maybe. Naradhama. Maya Parita Gyan. Krishna put them in different categories. Those who don't understand his position and surrender to him. So it's, a, it's, it's quite amazing that people could live 
in Bharat, in the land of Dharma. And keep their eyes closed. And so too, anywhere else in the world. So it's not so much a matter of geographic situation, but it's a lack of desire to know the absolute truth. I would say this is why people are remaining in so much ignorance, strongly under the influence of illusion. So because we have strong feelings that people should hear this message, that's why I'm trying my best. Many television programs are we trying to get people to hear the purpose of the human form of life. Yeah, Rashi Rishi Prabhu. Uh, so in India now we are launching that uh, state level ISKCON Bhagavad Gita as it is contest for students. And uh, last year we had also a very good uh, response of the students in Andhra Pradesh where 25,000 students they participated in a test of Bhagavad Gita with 100 multiple cho choice questions in mm -hmm. um, uh, six months time and uh, they were very happy to go into the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita and we are explaining how Bhagavad Gita is a practical book just like Arjuna 5000 years ago he was taking the Gita as a supreme guidance to make decisions about you know complete life and a practical situation to clear up points so India is really waking up again to the ancient culture which is the real India, I'm always telling to the Pilgrims, this is Bharat Bhumi, Veda Bhumi, Puni Bhumi, Dharma Bhumi, Karma Bhumi, the land of Krishna and Ram, but now it became Whiskey Bhumi, Chicken Bhumi, Bollywood Bhumi, with all the bad habits. So I find the people in India are, are liking that uh, the revival should go on. And they say, yeah, there are cheating politics and cheating gurus who are spying the original culture. So the interest in Bhagavad Gita and pure knowledge about God is really awakening again. And I want to know what is the effect in your side of the world? Well, uh, I had some discussion with some Christian missionaries some time ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we discussed was that the enemy is not this religious group against this one. We saw yeah. that the real problem is this sense gratification, this diversion away from religion. In other words, we were discussing that, look, religion can actually elevate society if people participate in, in cultivating higher principles, knowing God, loving God, but the big, the big problem is this attraction to sense gratification. As a matter of fact, sometimes people in those Western countries, they get a really bad impression of India through Bollywood movies. They think that all the women have a, what they call a prostitute mentality, just, you know, using their bodies to entertain men and uh, but we say, okay, yeah, that, that's pretty bad side. But we would also point out that in India you can find in the holy places, holy places, you can find genuine saintly persons whose purpose, whose life is meant for realizing the absolute truth. So what we're saying is there's a propaganda inducing people the sense gratification, so it's a little conflict here. It's a, the conflict is between those aspiring for attaining freedom from the cycle of birth and death and those who are just closing their eyes and who just want to enjoy the senses of the body. Now Krishna says that is dangerous business. He says in the Gita, Dhyayato vishayan pumsa sangashte shupa jayate Sangat sanjayate kama kama krodho vijayate While contemplating the objects of the senses, person develop attachment for them. Now, when this calm, this lust, 
is not satisfied. Krodha. Krodho. Anger. Anger. Now a lot of the violence, a lot of the crime and so on comes about because of this Krodha, this unfulfilled desire. Now the Vedic script is saying that where there is calm, there is no Ram. In other words, that's what I'm using. Okay. Ram is the reservoir of all pleasure. So Ramante Yogi no Nante Satyanande Charat Maniti Ramapade Nasho Param Brahma Vidyate. The saintly person, the yogis and devotion, they're linking with the reservoir of all pleasure, Rama. Complete happiness. But those who are not on this path, Krishna says, Ekeha Kuru Nandana, the aim is one. Fix. But Bahusakahi Anantascha, for the materialistic person, many branch, Bahusaka. Consciousness, Bhoga, Aishwarya, just absorb in sense gratification, as Prahlad said, Maya Sukhaya Bharam Udvahato Vibodha. They absorb in this Maya Sukhaya. Or flickering happiness. Yes. So this is existing in India and it is existing in the West. What can we do? But it is important, this message has to be made known. That is for sure. We have to make, we have to expose this illusion. And by giving Bhagavad Gita message, we hope that people would wake up. My experience in India also, especially amongst the youth, there's a massive revival going on uh, in their interest in their own ancient culture, which goes back not only thousands of years, but millions of years. And when I meet them, it's easy to wake them up, especially the last three years. When I, when I mention the statistics, uh, 60 billion animals are slaughtered every year, tortured, 40 million abortions in the West, uh, now also in India, uh, 10 marriages, 7 divorces, even people cannot live together. So please take uh, spiritual education very serious. In the last three years, uh, the, the young people are taking very serious the Bhagavad Gita, very easily to interest them in Bhagavad Gita. And uh, there's a great hope in this way. I feel a great, great hope because they're seeing all the confusion in the world, the political corruption, pollution, the economic pollution, the relationship pollution, the bad habits, the mind is disturbed. So the Gita is an excellent book to give you the strength. I tell the students, it's a Brahma Vidya. It's not just this uh, intellectual knowledge. It's, uh, you, it's energize your heart completely in your relation with Lord. And there is a, is a great, great revival going on, a little bit under the surface of uh, you know, what is popularly known. But uh, there is a great hope because India has shown while as a Westerner also I, I came to follow Sanatana Dharam, the real name is not actually Hinduist, it is it's, it's going, it shows harmony in all aspects of life, explained in the Vedas where the Bhagavad Gita is the right fruit of all the essence, the peak. So I, I, I wonder how the youth is taking it in the places where you are. Uh, the one good sign in Western countries is the uh, amount of people, so many people are becoming vegetarians. Veg many people are becoming vegetarians uh -huh. and that's a good sign. In fact, among Christians also, there's a, there's a group of people who on the basis of the Bible, they are trying to establish that the prescription is a vegetarian diet. There's a group, P-E-T-A, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. And they're making propaganda also. That's a good step forward. So, this is good because when people become non-violent, <clears throat> when they develop some sensitivity, because the golden rule, 
do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And I shall not kill. Fine. So we don't want anyone to cut our throat and eat our flesh. So why should we do it to others? It's common sense. So this makes people's heart very hard. This meat eating, this violence. In fact, one of the philosophers said, those who commit this violence to other living beings tend to do it to their own. They start slaughtering their own, the human beings. Because their heart becomes very hard when they kill other living beings. They become insensitive. In Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says, the true yogi, the true spiritualist is one who, by comparison to his own self, he sees the true equality of all beings in their happiness and distress. So he knows what makes me happy and what will make me distressed. He knows that, so he doesn't want to give that to others. So that's important. So I would say... That's happening. Yes, that uh, there are people who are waking up. Although there may be a great number who are closing their eyes and wasting the human form, it is the fact that there are many people who are having good awakening. And what about uh, the reincarnation and the interest to come to India to learn spirituality from India? Actually, that's another thing in America. Yoga. Oh, oh that's big. Even Kirtan now. Yeah, people, they, they go, they, they have yoga groups and so on, and sometimes Kirtan is incorporated into that. Millions of people actually are interested in yoga now. Millions of people are focusing on reincarnation. Yes, they believe in reincarnation because it's the reasonable way to explain human existence. There are three ways people try to possibly explain human existence. One, Darwin's so-called theory of evolution that gradually the single cellular the amoeba evolve and gradually evolve and now you have an evolved human being from that matter doesn't make sense so but we see that there is no proof of that you don't see goats becoming cows and monkeys becoming human beings you don't go into the zoo and see a man behind the bars because of something evolved there and stones producing children <laughs> So we discard that. That's not even a theory. You know, that's bogus. But the whole world, because they're blind, they accept that. So the other one is this, uh, you know, some of the religions, they propagate that God just created everything like that. Just created. Now we say, but why, did, why were some people created <coughs> in this suffering condition, devoid of good, you know, beauty and devoid of good intellect and devoid of, and another person is like, they say, well, uh, we are suffering for the sins of Adam and Eve. So we say, but this is not reasonable. Two persons in the past disobeyed, did something, did something wrong, and you mean generation upon generation, everyone has had to suffer for someone else's sin? What kind of God is that? Doesn't make sense. But then furthermore, if that be the case, we say, how come God doesn't give everybody an equal amount? In other words, why they don't have the same type of body and wealth? Why is it that someone is born blind and deformed and another one? So something not rational there. Krishna says in the Gita, Samohan Sarva Bhuteshu, Sama, I am equal to all. Name Dveshu, I don't envy anyone. So, <clears throat> there is a big problem when people misinterpret religious concepts, scripture, when they misinterpret, they water it down, then it doesn't have the effect to transform people's life. So that's why Srila Prabhupada's teaching is very effective. Very deep, very profound, this is the root of life. That's why also uh, so many people and students take up the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, but it goes answering to the depth of uh, 
knowledge and we see how harmonious, how kind the Lord deals. And he tells also that it is uh, it's only a bodily covering. The soul is always mamai bamsa jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana. Everybody is my eternal part and parcel, but they are suffering due to illusion. We have to come free from the bodily concept of life. That is very much missing in modern religion. But in the ancient teachings of uh, Sanatana Dharma, that was the root. We are spirit soul, we have nothing to do with the body. And that is the main point. Uh, if the world can understand, we can see an enormous transformation. I would say that Krishna consciousness philosophy has a basis, a foundation for harmonizing the world. <coughs> Why? Yeah, exactly. Because it teaches that everyone the, we are all spirit souls. We are not black and white and man and woman and all of that. We are all spiritual beings. Now, why it can further harmonize people is some of the religions tend to isolate themselves that we are the only ones. It's not good. Due to insufficient knowledge. Yeah. However, we see that all religions are meant to gradually elevate people to bring them to the one God. We see that all religions in pure relationship. Yeah, to bring to gradually. We and we understand why there are apparent differences because some people are situated in the mode of ignorance, some people are situated in the mode of passion, some Raja in the Dharma. mode of goodness, such for Dharma. So there, there are principles to regulate people in Tamagun. You, yeah. In other words, we would find scriptures speaking about meat eating, but regulating by sacrifice. We would find that. But no touching the cow. Oh yeah, no touching the cow, because that's hell for all. Go Rakshaya is mentioned again. So that's dangerous. She's a mother. I'm explaining to the people also. Uh, the cow protection is nothing Hindu. It is a universal principle. She's a mother. We take the milk. She's giving cow urine. She's giving cow dung to fertilize. She's a loving animal. She not hurt anyone. It's a common sense. You cannot touch. That's, that's why everything in Sanatana Dharma makes so much practical sense. And I would say that a lot of groups, rather than focus on principles that elevate, they segregate. In other words, we say Srila Prabhupada taught, he said Jesus Christ is our guru. Simple. He said he said, he, said, about love of God. he said the goal is to know God and to love God. So in all religions the purpose is to know God and to love God. So why is it that some people can't appreciate other people chanting the names of God, other people regulating their life and going towards God? I think this is due simply to insufficient knowledge. If the people can take their time, go more into detail, we see how brilliant the Gita is. Uh, a brilliant thing, when I came, when they started explaining me, we are not American, we are not Russian, we are not Indian, we are not Muslim, we are not Christian. Uh, we, are, uh, we are not Brahma, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sudra, we are not Brahmacharya, Kriyasa. We are an eternal servant of God. And anyone can come to God now, even he is very degraded. And you, you can purify immediately by chanting the holy name of the Lord. And you get that strength. I say, yeah, that's, that's the right thing. Everybody is welcome. We are not kicking out anyone. Suddenly you have to become ready to purify. And that makes perfect sense. Actually, in other ages, people used to do different types of this practice, that practice. But in this age of Kali Yuga, the Lord has made it very simple, mm. very simple, because too simple. This chanting of the we are too complicated. Of God, <laughs> it's too simple for us. We're too, too complicated for. What is the problem? This, the chanting of the holy names. 
anyone can do it. Even okay, so, sometimes in, in in our country, some some Hindu would say, "No, I I, I can't chant. I eat meat." So we I say, was also eating. So we say, "No, it is only the chanting." that can help you to give up the bad habit. Param drishtva, until and unless you get a higher taste, you won't be able to give up the bad habit. So, yeah, that's so the chanting, there's proof all over the world that by the chanting of the names of God, people can actually get a higher taste and they can give up the bad habits. All vices can be given up. So we see, that if people only understand the importance of this practice of chanting, Srila Prabhupada emphasized, hallowed be thy name, it's there. People know from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, the name of God is to be glorified. Hallowed be thy name and enter into the kingdom of God. So I would say that um, this practice of chanting it will help people to give up this dogmatic fanaticism. So we are requesting our viewers to take more close, deep, dedicated interest in the chanting of Holy Name, Hare Krishna Mantra, and study the, the Bhaktivedanta Swami edition of Bhagavad Gita very deeply. Bhaktivedanta Swami is so pure hearted and associated with pure devotees. And we can together make a revolution, a revival of Sanatana Dharma, which the world is very much in need. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.